welcome to the second half of the Grim Gazette, issue 12. I am your host, T. Morris, and we are doing things a little differently for the live crew. And for those of you who are too live for this crew, I'm here to tell you, yes, it's a weirder than usual night here at the Grim Gazette, but the good news is I will be making it worth your while. Please say hello, everyone, to our very, very special guest in studio. In studio, everyone, this is Valerie Griswold Ford. She is uh, not only a team member of OSI, she is formerly a team member of TAPS, as in the Atlantic Paranormal Society. So how about that? How about that? Um, so Val, uh, before we get into the, to the meat and potatoes of this particular, um, this, this particular interview, I, I want to first ask, that you give the audience a little something about about you like like who are you how do we know each other and don't tell people where the bodies are buried obviously <laughs> but 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 please uh go on ahead and just introduce yourself um i'm val griswold ford t and i met writing uh we both worked on this wonderful little book called the complete guide to writing fantasy which it wasn't complete but that's okay and he's running to grab it it's kind of scary um, but that was almost 20 years ago. Um, I have been ghost hunting for about 10 to 12 years. Um, I was a member of the TAPS family. I was not a member of ghost hunters. I right, was a member right. of the TAPS family. But yeah, I did that for about eight years. And um, I have a new team now that we are starting up. And... Uh, Oh, Cammie, you just made me feel old. <laughs> you just made me feel old. Um, so, yeah, I'm a writer in my spare time, and that's me. I live in New Hampshire. Actually, um, Val, it's been longer than 20 years. Oh, God. Because uh, this, this print edition that I hold of The Complete Guide to Writing Fantasy, Volume 1, which was then followed up a few years later by volume two. This came out in 2003. Oh my God, yeah. 21 so years. 21, 21 years. 21 so years. Let's, so let's, so, so that, that is kind of a, 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 a high pass, but I'll go, in, I'll go into some of the details. So this is where Val and I first met. We were part of an online writing crew and Which is still around, actually. It's still around. Forward wow. Motion is still around. They wow. have a Discord server now. Okay. <laughs> they upgraded, baby. They upgraded. Oh, yeah. And, and the thing about the complete guide, this was this was the brainchild of these two guys, Darren Park and Tom Dullamond. And what, what happened was some of us were published. Some of us were getting ready to be published. And uh, Darren and Tom said, you know what? We have so much knowledge on this on this." Uh, this well, at that time, email list yep. as opposed to a server. Yep. That, that's what the, that's what the Utes, that's what the Utes would say at this point. Email list. Um, so there, there you go. There's the there's the old, there's the old fart alarm. Um, but he said, why don't we get some people together and we write ourselves a book? And we we it started off as an ebook, and then from an ebook, we we actually got it into print with. At that time, my publisher, I remember pitching it mm -hmm. to our, our then publisher, uh, Lovely still Lady. My publisher. Yep, still Lovely Lady by the name of Gwyn Gates, uh, Dragon Moon Press. I said, Would you be interested in doing a, a writing guide? And the way she described it to us when we, we actually did meet, um, she basically said, For every one novel she sells, she sells five of these. Oh, yeah. I still and, have people asking yeah, me about it. Yeah. And and you know, if I could go back now and and rewrite some stuff, oh yeah, I would. Oh, yeah. Obviously, you would. Oh yeah. But I still stand by this scrappy little book. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a it's it's a it's a good read. It's a good read. We kept it fun. We kept it light. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing was, was that Val said, "Would anybody be interested in crashing on my couch and going on a book tour?" And Val, please to tell the please to tell the court how. How many places did we visit? We did seven stops in four days in three states. <laughs> so we did New Hampshire. No, actually, we did four states. 
We did New Hampshire. We did Maine. We did Massachusetts. Maine? Where did we Maine, go in Maine? We did the, um, that was the Barnes and Nobles that Wen came to. Oh, God, you're right. Wait, wait, the, the Gwen came to? No, that Wen came to. Oh, that Wen Spencer to. came to. Yeah. Oh, you're right. You're so right. So we did Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and New York. Yep. In four and a half days? Four and a half days. Four and a half days. Jesse left that one marinate. We, uh, we killed it. We killed it. Now, here's the funny thing. We were driving we were driving back from the New York date, and I'm trying to remember the name of the place. Oh, it was this cute little thing out in it, The funny thing is, it looked like a bunker. When you, it does when, look like it, a it, bunker. It looked like it looks like it looks like a uh, not necessarily vault if you couldn't afford Vault Tech, this would be the place you'd go to, right? This would be the vault uh, the vault oh, you'd go into. Let me see if I can find it. And I want it, it's like fantasy fantasy and wonders or yeah. science and fan I, I can't remember the name of the place. Um, so so while Val is looking that up, I can go ahead and say, so we're driving back. And actually, the story is here. And I actually got it. I think I got it pretty much for verbatim. Flights of Fantasy. Flights of Fantasy. It's called Flights of Fantasy Games. It's still there. It is in... <laughs> Uh, let me find the website. Let me so, so let me go ahead and reread yep, this. Go so, ahead. so I'm gonna, I'm oh, gonna no, read this. Oh no, it's closed. Actually, it's permanently closed. Oh no, flights oh. of fan. Uh, they decided to go online. Ah, okay. Well, you know what? Uh, you know, good for them. Good yeah. for them. At least they're at least they're still in there. At least, at least they're still in the mix. Oh, yep. bitter powder. Let's get out of so, here. Okay. So this was what I wrote. Um, let's see. Uh, let me step back in my time machine of memory and travel. Back to an age of innocence. This <laughs> and red wine. Can I? Can I? <laughs> can I read this with a straight face? This age takes place in a realm that is kept warm even in the throes of winter by the people who inhabit it. We join two intrepid heroes. Tra- I can't believe I wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> I can. <laughs> we join two intrepid heroes traversing from point A to point B in a car that's got gas in the tank, tunes in the radio, and several boxes of books in the back seat. Mm-hmm. I was somewhere in New Hampshire, or maybe it was Massachusetts, I'm not sure. I always missed the crossing over state lines, which I did. He did, every time. He'd be like, where are we now? But I was the guest of The Complete Guides, Valerie Griswold Ford, which is which was this book. And I didn't want to complain that nobody was letting me know that we were changing states. Granted, I was silently theorizing that this was all some kind of conspiracy. <laughs> New Hampshire didn't want you to know you were leaving the state for whatever reasons the truth is out there. You see, Val had presented to all of the authors of The Complete Guide an innocent little invitation to join her for her group signings in the New England area. Only one responded with a yes. Me. <laughs> At this point, the micro tour, that's what we called it, the micro tour. We called it the micro, the micro tour. tour. Um, the micro tour was winding down. We were hitting a cafe, three bookstores, and a library. No big deal until you find out that the, we were doing these events in three different states, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and New York. Wow. Oh, maybe the book. No, I really thought the Barnes & Noble was in. No, No, I bet it was in Portsmouth. It was in Portsmouth. It was in Portsmouth. Okay. So we were coming back from one of our events, and the topic of the complete guide to writing fantasy came up. We chatted about how good it felt being part of such a successful title, but we also mentioned the frustration over some people who took sadistic joy in telling us, well, is this really a complete guide? Because I'm looking at the table of contents, and I think there's a lot missing. What do you say to something like that? Well, we say it's complete, but it's just not completely complete. That won't work. Maybe I just wrote it. The title wasn't my idea. Nah, that just makes it sound like a government employee. Perhaps, look, just buy the damn book, you pinhead. <laughs> that was mine, I think. Yeah. <laughs> While I seriously consider replies like that to be more uh, for the abrasive fans of science fiction and fantasy from time to time, I always manage to exercise self-control. But as we're chatting, the conversation took a different turn. <laughs> What we need, Val stated, and stated quite confidently now that I think about it, is a sequel. A sequel, I asked. A sequel to the complete guide? Hmm, deja vu. And while I was at n- while it was at night when we were having this conversation, I could see the glow of the dashboard, a certain glimmer in Val's eyes. In retrospect, I knew what it was. An agenda. Why not? she asked, her glimmer now being fanned into a raging bonfire. Good God, T. <laughs> I've never read this in front of Val. I should say that too. I've never read this in front of Val. Uh, the complete guide is complete in its own way. It covers the basics of writing. What we need is a sequel that goes beyond the basics with very specific and particular topics for the writer who has finished the complete guide and wants more. Uh-huh. I said, going quiet for a moment. 
it was clear that Val had spent some time thinking this out, and she had nicknamed me Quad Boy during the weekend. That's a whole other story. That's a whole story. different avenue. We're not going down. No. Following a blurry night involving me and a quadruple shot espresso, I was tempted to dub her Agenda Girl. I also had to wonder if this agenda was completely her own. This wasn't the first time I had heard the word sequel dropped into conversation centered around the guide. Dragon Me Impressed was using the S word as sales for the title were exceeding all expectations. As publishing is a business at its core, it was only logical to begin planning how to make lightning strike twice. But sequels are tricky. <laughs> God. <laughs> okay. But sequels are tricky. Look at the Matrix Reloaded and Revolutions. Or the Chronicles of Riddick, for instance. On second thought, don't. don't. <laughs> Look at the Matrix and Pitch Black. With many, off well, with many offerings, the originals are always sharp, intelligent, and incredible. You can go back to the theater and catch something new every time. And still not burn out on them when they come out on DVD. But when sequels come around, something's usually missing. It would be nice to think every sequel would be Spider-Man 2. But many follow-ups grant a few cool moments here and there with its ending regarded as a blessed relief that the ordeal is done. I like them both seconds, so don't feel bad. Yeah, there we go. The golden rule of writing sequels, there's no reason to go back to the well if that puppy's dry. And wasn't, and that wasn't even my biggest issue. So what do we call this new guide, I asked. Val and I spent a good amount of miles kicking around ideas, and here were some of the possible titles we came up with. The more than complete guide to writing fantasy. No, really, this is the complete guide to writing fantasy. Just buy the damn book, you pinhead, a personal favorite of mine. <laughs> Son of the complete guide to writing fantasy. Bride of the complete guide to writing fantasy. Revenge of the complete guide to writing fantasy. You have to understand that at this point, <laughs> it was it was like, it was 2 like 2 a.m. 2 a.m. We were driving back from, dear God, Schenectady or something, New York, yeah. back to New Hampshire. And Ooh. we were both exhausted because this was like our last stop. Uh, the increasingly misnamed Complete Guide to Writing Fantasy, Val's favorite, but our publisher and our lawyers mentioned something about Douglas Adams' estate being able to sue us, so we dropped it. Yeah. Um, so, and from this point on, I call you Agenda Girl. Yep. Um, let's see. Um... <laughs> I forgot this one too, and man, I'm I have I have a pretty decent memory when it comes to conversations with people. Um, <clears throat> after I agreed to co-edit the Fantasy Writers Companion, which is what Val and I did, we wound up being the editors of this. Um, we started brainstorming various topics. That was easy. Now comes the hard part: getting writers. Um, it wasn't as hard as I thought. So, and there were a score of other questions, anxieties, and worries that were. Popping into my head as I approached award-winning author Wen Spencer. Hey, Wen. Who crashed our two of our yeah. signings, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Hey, Wen, I I um yeah. Already the words were getting caught in my throat. I'm gonna be editing a writer's guide. It's a sequel to the complete guide to writing fantasy. A sequel to the complete guide to writing fantasy, she asked me. By this time I was really hating that title. <laughs> and I hated that title from the from day one, I tell you right now. Um, yeah, and well, I wanted to know if you would like to write a chapter for it about writing across genres. When hesitated. How many words would you want? Oh, crap, word count. That was something Val and I hadn't even discussed. No more than 8,000, 5,000 minimum, I stated confidently, while I thought, okay, what part of my butt did that come from? <laughs> Jesus. And when do you need it by, when asked, let's see, it's December right now, so how about May? I said, Oh, sure, no problem. She said, sounds like fun. Just email me the details when you get home. Okay, see you later. When I left PhilCon, I had recruited an award-winning fantasy author, an award-nominated horror author, and one of the top authors from Wizards of the Coast for our project. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, if I remember, uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, that's right. She wouldn't let me. She wouldn't. Let, I wanted to remember. I, I remember. I remember wanting to end this chapter with. So thanks for buying this book, book you, you pinhead. pinhead. And she wouldn't let you do <laughs> it. Let me do it. <laughs> All right, Cammy. Here's the quad boy story, Ooh. really quickly. Oh my god, the quad boy story. So T gets in from his flight. I pick him up. I We're am... supposed to go to our first event like that evening. And I was, and and I think my flight had run late. And your flight had run late, and he's like, "I need a coffee. I need a coffee so bad." So we stop at Starbucks because he wasn't a Dunkin' boy. He was a Starbucks. 
boy. Whatever. Yeah, I was I was a Starbucks boy back then. So we stop at Starbucks, and he says, <laughs> "I would like a triple espresso yeah. latte, please." Yeah. And the guy goes, "Oh, I made it a quad by accident. Is that no, okay?" No, no, close. He said, "I still have enough for one, one more, more shot. shot. Do you want to go for it?" And I was so tired. I said, yeah, "Sure, go for it." So we are meeting Wen Spencer. This is the first time I've actually met Wen and Walter Hunt. And Walter Hunt, yeah. They were also at this thing with us. And you could see the moment the caffeine kicked in <sighs> on T's face. I was seeing sound and hearing <laughs> colors. Wen and I were afraid we were going to have to like duct tape him into his seat. It and, was hysterical. And didn't, didn't Walter one time lean over to you and say, I want a quad espresso. Yes. The funny what? thing is, the funny thing is, I got the idea of a triple espresso from the movie from the, from the movie that I had been watching a couple times during that during that phase, Swordfish. Mm -hmm. And what happened was was that they walk into a into a coffee bar, uh, uh, Hugh Jackman and, and John Travolta, and 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 Jackman without even you know, and this was this was Jackman when when you know badass badass hacker Jackman. He walks up yep. and, he goes, and he goes triple shot of espresso and. And Travolta hesitates, looks at looks at him and go. And <laughs> and and I was like, I'm gonna have my Hugh Jackman moment because I think I really need it. So I said, I said a triple espresso. And the guy said, I still have room for one more shot. And I said, go for it. Go for it. But holy Hannah. Um The crash was amazing. Oh man. <laughs> I was like in the back seat going, yo, my mom will dog face and banana patch. I just <laughs> I was a mess. But um that is how Val and I uh, met, started a friendship. Yep. And while we weren't, uh, while we weren't investigating the paranormal at the same time, it is kind of weird, simpatico, and and funny as hell that this past weekend we did our very first uh, paranormal get together, uh, investigation, investigation, whatever you want to call it. We had our first paranormal case together yep. in Clifton Forge, Virginia. And I thought what would be really nice, since Val is on her way back from that, I wanted to talk to Val about her perspective on it for the Grim Gazette. So I think first thing, Val, can I just ask you how many places have we ever have you ever investigated that handed you a packet like this? Never. With with color photos, everybody. Yeah. Color photos. Okay. Now, you have to understand too. Um, I the taps family doesn't tend to investigate public places doesn't tend to do things like the tv show um mostly what it is is private cases so we're going into someone's home and helping them out um so this is i haven't done very many public actually i think this is probably my second or third the other ones being um i did a town hall in new hampshire and I did. <clears throat> Actually, that's it because everything else has been private cases. Okay, so so then let's let us let us just use that as as a jumping point for this for this uh, this deep dive on the Gazette. Mm -hmm. So, what would you say are the biggest pros and cons of investigating someone's home versus investigating what a lot of groups do now? They investigate historical sites, which I'm assuming. And I don't know how much of it you wanted to share from our phenomenal dinner, which, yes, we'll be talking about a little later. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> ah, the bone. Ah. Um, yeah. Oh, we did have the castle. That's right, Carrie. Irish Sun Dragon is is one of my fellow teammates, so oh. she'll keep me honest. So, hey. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Irish Sun Dragon. Nice to meet you. So, so again, um, now you, you mentioned that, that it was... It was really, it wasn't necessarily TAPS, but it was, or the, or the Ghost Hunters, but it was sci-fi. It was the networks that were saying, we don't want you doing homes anymore. We want you to be doing these public places like libraries and- Yeah, and, for the and, TV show. Right. But what do you think are the advantages of doing something like an asylum or, or, or a prison or, some, or, or a, a public space like that? versus a private home because i would love to have this discussion with you about this so um pros and cons pros and cons so pros would be in a lot of places um 
not so much what you're doing right now because right. you're going into a lot of new places, which is really kind of neat. Um, and, that was and the kind of extremely neat. lucky and extremely lucky. I do not take we, that for granted. We were um, the first team to investigate both of the places we went to this past weekend, yep. so it was really neat. Um, so there is the history known with private cases. You have to do a lot of digging. Right. Um, I spent a lot of time in libraries. Uh, looking at old deed records and things like that. Um, the other thing, too, is in homes, at least what I got from it, and, and Carrie can, can chime in as well, but a lot of what we were doing, 99% of what we were doing was reassuring the family that they were safe. Right. Because what the big thing was is, you know, these are people who have to live at this house. You know, so it makes me mad. I'll have to say this. It makes me mad when I see a lot of the TV shows that go in and they deliberately provoke, which annoys the snot out of me. And this is why, because they can just leave. And you see, that's that is my biggest hang up because I have been asked before, will OSI ever do? Will they ever do? Will, will we ever do a, 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 a private domicile? And someone has someone has approached OSI about this. And I feel very uncomfortable about it because it's one thing to say, okay, we're going to go investigate your home and you, you know, it'll be, it, it'll be cool. We're going to, we're going to film it. We're going to put it on YouTube. But the thing is at the end of the night, it's like, well, yeah, we picked up some weird stuff. We were able to debunk this. We were able to debunk this, but you know, um, that's really all we got. See you later. Bye. And then yeah. we're out of there. And it's different with a, with a, public space yep so you know? um carrie just also put in a great thing um being pressured to validate right their experiences right. um <clears throat> a lot of I, I i will be perfectly honest and you don't see this you saw this on the early ghost hunters a lot you don't see it very much on a lot of the shows out there now um sometimes nothing happens it's not like we can. You don't see that. You don't see that on the network shows. No. You do see it on YouTube. You do see it on and YouTube. And that's cool. Yeah, you're right. That's it's a total. Tra it's an open transparency thing. So um, there was a lot of sitting around. Yeah, it really did. Um, <laughs> it, there's a lot of sitting around in the dark, waiting for something to happen. Right. Um, right. One of the best cases we did was a private home, sort of. Um, was the Betty Davis house. We actually got to do the Betty Davis house up in New Hampshire. Cool. It was her summer home. It was really neat. And we had a lot of good experiences. But those were kind of few and far between. A lot of the places that we went to, they were expecting us to be the TV show. And we weren't. Right. So that was really hard, I think, for us. And yeah, it did. It took a lot of the enjoyment away from the experiences because rather than investigating, we were validating right. or trying to validate. And you see, um, what I feel is is the advantage of... I miss Colebrook. Uh, but one of the things that, that I I think is an advantage uh, to, to investigating public spaces like the two that we did, the theater... And the and the uh, the train museum was that we have well, you're not always going to get something like this. No. I mean, uh, first off, huge shout out for anybody that uh, that that hasn't seen the previous uh, follow ups to our our paranormal weekend with the uh, old spirits investigations. This is from the the good folks over at the CNO Railway Heritage Museum. It was amazing. Uh, this is this was actually put together by the Chesapeake and Ohio. Historic Society, and I don't know if they just had this lying around, or I got the impression that they put this together for, for us. us yeah. But it was a a very detailed fact book, um, and it's got every it's got all the cars that are on there. It's got it, it's got um, it's got the plans for how they're going to restore everything. It's got it's got references on. Um, on 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 what these car you know how these cars were designed who designed these cars this is amazing but the thing is you're not gonna get this at a house I'm bringing mine home Carrie don't worry oh yeah because <laughs> we all got one yeah we all got one 
I mean, she came in, uh, this, this lovely lady, Brandy, who was representing the Chesapeake and Ohio Historical Society, came in with a whole stack of these. Mm -hmm. And she was like, what, you mean this isn't normal that I'm supposed to do this? I'm like, no, <laughs> usually we do this. And of course, my wife being a reference librarian, she was like, my process. Yeah, she really <laughs> was. I mean, I mean, she, and, but I mean, it's, it, it really is an, an amazing, uh, an amazing document here yeah. and it's just it, it, oh my god this 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 caboose we didn't, I'm just gonna I say, didn't get into that caboose I'm I, sad. I got into that caboose chat I got into that caboose <laughs> it was amazing um but the 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 thing about about going to places like like the the railway museum is they've got the history there yeah Versus when you go into a house, you have no clue what you're stepping into. Yep. Which, by the way, not to turn this into a, uh, a, a promo for <laughs> for the next premiere, but Friday at 9, you'll see what happens when someone who has a property and they say it's haunted, but they don't know the history. You're going to see what happens. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm just going to leave it at that for now. So so I, I just I, don't, I would not feel comfortable going into a home. It's 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 definitely a lot more hand holding, right? Um, and and probably a lot more, like you said, a lot more debunking, just to let people know, look, you know, this the, the Vecna is not coming out yeah. here to fold you yeah, into. There's, you know, there, yeah. there's no demons. I right. I mean, and you and I have discussed this. The the scariest place that I've ever done, I was scared of the people there right. and not the ghosts. Right. Right. Um, but. Yeah, ninety nine percent of it was hand holding, and no, you're you're safe. You know they're not gonna hurt you. This is why this is doing this, and a lot of it was debunking. And I really, yeah, very sketchy situations. Um, <laughs> the a, a lot of it was debunking, and I really liked that because it made you think. You know, there were <laughs> there was one time, and I'm gonna tell this story, Carrie. Oh yeah, the one with the kids screaming. Yeah, that's a different one. Um, but. Do you remember the um, golf course? Uh, See, that sounds like fun, but let's go. It was a miniature golf course. It was oh, great. Oh, dear God, a haunted miniature golf course. It was a haunted course. miniature golf course. I love it. And we're all at base camp. And Beware, all, all of a sudden, team. all of a sudden, we're like, oh, my God, there's wh what's going on? There's water on this camera. Yeah, so it took us about, what, two minutes to... Uh, figure out that the sprinklers had gone on, <laughs> We're going on camera. <laughs> um but it was really neat you know um the other one that i remember that was different and i i thought of this actually when we were down in the green room mm -hmm. downstairs because of all the freaking mirrors we did a hair salon oh wow and it was so hard to use the lights but it had been an animal shelter beforehand, and we actually picked up dogs barking. Oh wow! In the basement that yeah. none of us heard. Interesting. Until we came back, but yeah. So um, the thing about public spaces, not having done a lot of them, um, the big thing is not wanting to make a bad impression. Especially, like you said, when we're going into someplace new for the first time, we don't want to screw it up for the rest of the investigators that might yep. be coming through. Yep. You also don't want to, um, you don't want to scare them. You know, I mean. Oh, uh, absolutely. You, you don't want, you know, people working there or any of the associates. To feel uncomfortable right, or anything. Right, exactly, exactly. And so, um, <laughs> a lot of, I really like the way you and Phil explain things so so i don't this will not go on to anything but especially the night before when we were all hanging out and brandy came over and you and phil were explaining to her what you do and how you do it and you could just see her relaxing that we weren't gonna go in light a bunch of incense you know tear conjure, off our shirts search yeah, screaming conjure demons, up spirits yeah, yeah. and demons and then yeah. just leave right Right, right, it right. was very respectful. I noticed that with Wendy as well at the theater. It was very respectful. It was very much, we're interested in the history. And we want to tell the stories. And that's really cool. So this so this actually kind of kind of jumps to my next question, which <laughs> I wanted to know. What, what do you feel 
having having just done a, a weekend with with OSI, how would you describe the OSI experience with your experience with Taps? Now I know it's been a few years, yeah. But I also know the Taps made an, the the Taps family yep. made an impression on you. They did, and so I just want to I want I, I'm just really curious as to you, where did you see the differences and like just how how was it. How was it like new territory for you, apart from the fact that we were doing public places instead of private homes? Yeah, so um, I hadn't played with a lot of the, I don't want to say played, I hadn't used a lot of the, um, the what are you looking at? Oh, sorry. No, I'm, no, yeah, remember, okay. it's an interview, but yeah. I'm also about to, I'm also about to, to do a little bit of like, like side, side eye moderation in gotcha. case anybody's got a questions so that you don't have to watch the questions gotcha. I'll, I'll ask the questions so you relax um, and tell the story so you go you're so good. um <clears throat> it was i i hadn't used a lot of the equipment before taps we went very basic um we had a dv we had a dvr system set up we did handy cams and we did digital recorders we had some k2 meters and a geiger counter and i think that was it right carrie i mean we didn't really do a lot so this was my first time using um, the 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 two paranormal um, the paranormal pucks. Um, the uh, you know um, we use Ghost Tube for the first time. Carrie, I now have a subscription to it. It's awesome. Wait till you see it. Um, so we got to do things that I didn't get to do. Um, didn't do as much debunking, but there really wasn't a lot to do. Um, we might have to go back later once we look at the, you know, once we look at the evidence, but, um, yeah, please no questions about Cody and Satori. <laughs> you know, I was trying him. to be subtle, but you brought it up. So there you go. Um, so, I mean, but, uh, but I guess what I'm, what, what I was curious about your perspective on what we did with OSI was that we still, we still tried very hard to approach this from a scientific Oh, an yeah. analytical point of view because that's that's another thing yeah. that we're very we're, we're very driven towards we want to mm -hmm. make sure that whatever it is we're doing it's not it's not the the rem pod goes off and oh that's that's paranormal that's it's, paranormal. Not, it's yeah, not no. always it's not always um <clears throat> that was that was really cool it was it was weird there were a lot of us on this investigation, way more than I'm used to. Um, even when we had our TAPS team, there were usually only four or five of us going at ah, any one time. There we go, yeah. And we usually went in, like, groups of two. So, like I was saying to you. And so we had groups of four, and it was kind of... I was like, okay, this is kind of strange, but, you know, whatever. Um, it was also... It was, uh, I'm going to say it, Carrie, and I'm sorry. It was weird setting up, not setting up a DVR. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I was thinking about that, especially after I got back. I went back to look at Amy, and uh, Amy's Crypt, and I looked at uh, the recent Project Fear and all mm -hmm. this stuff. And I realized now why uh, we are primarily avoiding the whole DVR thing. And it's because with the DVR thing, you're basically setting up the cameras and the cables and doing all the stuff you see, you know, montage, down. montage, montage. But if you note Amy's Crypt, Project Fear, um, Paranormal Quest, none of these teams really do use DVRs. They're all portable. Yep. They're as portable as they can be. And, now, oh, go, and go ahead. I was going to. Yeah. yeah. Well, so and the other thing, too, the other thing I noticed is it was a lot shorter than I thought it would be. It goes by fast. It yeah. goes. Well, it not only does it go by fast, but a lot of the investigations that that we did in private homes, we got there at like five or six mm -hmm. and we didn't leave until like two in the morning. Right. So going ahead and yeah, disrupting the end. Yeah, it was. It was very much a. We were there for the long haul, right? And, and I get, thing, and I totally get that. But that—that's one of the, now that I say would be a major pro as opposed to a con mm -hmm. <clears throat> with a with a house. With a house, you can say, yeah, we're uh, sending you off to a to a motel. We're spending, you know, we're we're we're, we're moving in. We're setting up our DVR, and we're going to be here till two, three, four in the morning. Yeah. But a public place like a theater. Or a museum, they're going to be like, yeah, no. no, you're going to be out of here by one, two at the latest, yeah. you know. 
Unless it's a special event. Unless it's a special right. event, yeah. And um, the other thing was, I had a thought and it just like pooped away. Um, it does that sometimes. Well, one one of the things I would I would also um, I would also add too is that the problem with being portable though is you might miss something. Going back to something that we talked about today, me and Val. We were watching, uh, well, when Val finally uh, got here, uh, we were watching- she took the scenic route. Yeah, she took the scenic route. Um, we were watching Project Fear, their part two in the Sally House. This was the, the thing that was kind of annoying me a little bit. Uh, I understand the Project Fear has to be portable because that's the YouTube way. But in that clip, you see that they're freaking out over a cat ball that supposedly moved on its own accord and hop down the down the stairs and i'm like guys you are putting a cat ball at the top of the stairs and then you're going to another room why don't you have a small little camera trained just on that that's that's an amateur that's an amateur beginner 101 approach to filming stuff with the paranormal granted it's one more piece of equipment that you got to be responsible for but you really should have had a camera focused on that but instead we got to take your word for it mm -hmm. that it moved on its own accord and i'm like come on guys come on and see and that's the thing too is that was the other thing that was different for me because i had never been filmed for right an invest you know so so we live streamed the investigation which yep. was was really cool um, but it was very different because I'm used to us just going in and doing our investigation. We didn't usually do any um, review on site. Right. We would take it back and two to three weeks later, we would be getting back to the client with whatever we found. And, and, so, and we're, yeah, we're, and we're the same way. We don't do any stuff like like reviewing of stuff on site unless it's really something important, yeah. like if it's a shadow figure or something yeah. like that. Um, what we tend to do at OSI is we'll film it, and then we will review it. We will review it the following year yeah. because so basically this investigation isn't showing up until season four. Yep. Now we may be throwing in some clips, maybe throwing some teasers here and there, obviously because we had such a great time there. We had so much. Fun oh my there. God! What a what a as I said, what a weekend it was! It was an amazing weekend. I could d easily <clears throat> do one investigation one night at the theater, just at the theater. Oh yeah. yeah and yeah. then one and I would love to go back and I might go back this week. Because <laughs> I'm in Clifton Forge until the end of the week. Hmm. Um I might go back during the day to walk around and just see some of the stuff at the um at the train museum that I didn't get to see. I would actually tell you if you if you've got the if you've got the the drive to be able to do it. Um Go to the go to the Pullman dining car mm -hmm. and then push to the back. Okay. Because that was where Phil and I, I, I just, I kept looking around that space thinking to myself, this place after hours is going to be bonkers. It's going to be ridiculous. And we didn't get to that part because we only had two hours and it flew by. It really did. And again, that is part of the, that's one of the downsides of doing the, the, the public stuff because mm -hmm. You, you have a very small window. Now, the good news is about the public stuff is that you know that the public stuff isn't necessarily gonna be going anywhere. Yeah. Which uh, I'm, you know, crossing my fingers that that Brandy and Wendy, who I did send uh, thank you notes to and then said, hey, we loved being with you guys. Um, hopefully, we will be getting an invite to come back. That would be awesome you know, I, because I there's so much more I wanna see. So, so, so let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about Let's talk about the 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 um, the day the day on a whole, or if you want to go into the weekend, talk about the premiere, what um, you liked, what you didn't like. I mean, I'm I'm anxious to to hear what your impressions of the weekend were. I I so the theater I loved. I kind of bummed that we none of us got to the second floor, but that's just a hey, we can come back to that. Um, it was very interesting learning how to use some of the new tools. Mm -hmm. Um. It was very interesting to see another team, to, to work with another team and see how other people investigate. Um, especially having Jada and, and Nix there was very different from what I had done before. So It was also different for us, I don't mind saying, because Nix isn't always around, mm -hmm. obviously. 
Um, that was our second investigation with Jada. And <clears throat> and I gotta say, having uh people that are that are sensitive, mm -hmm. being you, Jada, and and Nix, that is something that that is not a normal thing for us. And I want to say it, it added something to the investigation that I, I don't think mentally I was ready to handle. It was it got Partic very intense. Particularly with Jada. Yes. Now, that is not a slam on Jada. No, no. It just it got really it got intense, really intense that last really hour. quick. Yeah. And and I'm like and it was it was the thing that I was trying to I think there's a fine line between intense and sensational. Mm -hmm. And it was more of okay. I can adjust to this. I can pivot to this. But what about our guests? Yep. And from what it looked like and sounded like, Brandy and the other the other woman that was with us was yeah, also I was all, I want to say it was Nicole or ne Michelle. I can't remember. I don't remember. Well, I know that that person seemed okay with it. Mm -hmm. It just it just kind of caught me off guard because mm -hmm. I didn't see it coming. And I think the reason that they were okay with it was because even when. You and Phil kind of got off your feet a little bit because it's not something you're used to dealing with. Nix was right there, and yeah, Nix knew how to handle and it. And Nix handled it. Nix yeah. handled it like a pro. So we we basically had it wasn't anything that went out of control. It didn't go out of control. Yeah, and and that was and and if I if it if it seemed like on the stream that I had pulled the plug early, for me it was more about it's getting late. I know this is getting, it's starting to get intense for me. I don't want this to be the final impression that we all yeah. have. I want to make sure that, that we all leave here with our heads held high and we're yep. all good. Actually, we do have a question from mm -hmm. Cammie to you. Um, what was going through your mind when you felt the coldness and the headache in the theater? Um, now, was that on the, was that in the, the was that on the main, was that on the main stage or was that downstairs? That in the was, end? that was on the main stage, I think thing mm -hmm. um it it didn't feel like i wasn't threatened by it um i didn't feel anything no i didn't there feel was anything malevolent. Ma malevolent in the theater no at the train station there was something in that pullman car yeah and i don't know what was in the back of the pullman car so that's mm. kind of one of the places i want to go yeah, yeah but yeah. um it, it was more of a I've been sensitive all my life, so, and I'm very lucky that my father was very into this too. So he was just like, yeah, you're sensitive. Here, we're going to teach you. And so I've been doing paranormal since I was, you know, as my grandfather would say, knee high to a grasshopper. Yeah, a wee barn. Yeah. 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 So um, it was just more of a validation kind of of what we were getting. Um, it doesn't really scare me. It's it's just kind of a, okay, yep. Yeah. I know how to tell them to knock it off if 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 it gets to be too painful. So um so let's let's again let's focus back on the theater. Mm -hmm. What were were there any particular standouts? Were there uh the green room was fascinating. There was something there was something, there was something really weird. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was malicious. I wouldn't I, say it was malevolent. No, it was but it was straight weird. up weird. The and whole the whole Estes with with, with Pip. Yeah. Was and, was odd. And I, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna say this um saying I don't mean demon. <laughs> I do have a feeling that what was down there may be non human. Only because because of the way it was acting and i don't mean malevolent non-human i just mean it was not <laughs> especially with pips what pip was saying she was hearing right, right right um it almost sounded to me like a mimic like mm -hmm. it was mimicking something that it knew would get a response right so that's why I'm saying maybe it might have been non-human. I don't know. I would want to do a lot more work in there to find out. Um, the restaurant was also very bizarre. The the, the entire downstairs, yeah. and I think, I mean, I'm I'm still trying to understand. I'm, I mean, I've been asking about this ever since. This is great. Um, Anyone want a hug? Hi, baby. No. <laughs> um. I have been asking this question ever since, uh, you know, the Ghost Hunters brought it up. 
you know, they talk about running water, running oh, water. Yeah. And I also know in lore, running water is a barrier for some spirits that they can't cross running water. Um, and I understand, I understand that to a point. Mm -hmm. But I have a feeling that whatever was down in the basement, because of that, um, because of Smith Creek running by the theater, that had to be playing into whatever was down in that in that bottom line. Oh yeah, there was definitely more energy down in the yes. basement and up on the third floor. Right. Those were the two. I really there wasn't <clears throat> a lot in the theater. Well, it started until I did Shakespeare. Until you did Shakespeare. And then so apparently, apparently everybody's a critic, even in the afterlife. <laughs> but I will say, I will say that in both. To some extent, I did pick up this vibe on the main stage, and I don't know if that makes me a sensitive or what, but it was more like intuition. But the reoccurring theme on the third floor and then the uh, the stage itself, the reoccurring theme there for me was, who the hell are these people? Yeah, why are you here? And and you got that a lot yeah. in your writing. So, why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you here? If you didn't see the live stream, I actually did some automatic writing, which I haven't done. Her in... I should say, Val's approach to automatic writing, which is different from my approach to yeah, automatic writing. Yeah, I haven't done it in years. I decided to try and do it, and a lot of it was, why are you here? Why are you here? Yeah. And, um... That was crazy, too. That was really crazy. It was. And it wasn't... But again, it wasn't hostile. It was like, you know, what are you doing here? Why are you in my space? Now, I, and now Kimmy is bringing up in, in chat, she's bringing up in chat that uh, she felt like that um, it felt evil or that, you know, and I don't think, like I said, I don't think it, it really was evil. It didn't. It really didn't. It felt didn't. curious. It felt curious It felt very curious, us. yeah. It felt... A little, um, it, the, the, the folks upstairs, I think we're not happy that they were not consulted before we came in. Yeah, I really yeah. have a feeling that whoever is up on the third floor is kind of a control freak. Well, and, that was where the Masons And that was where the Masons possibly met, were. So, yeah. so um, and, and that seemed to jive with the stuff in the basement was definitely curious and maybe mischievous and maybe mischievous maybe mischievous yeah um i'd want to follow up with with jada um for some stuff that went on there and i'd want to ask her some more questions ooh, ooh. but um twitch mom twitch mom actually said she also agrees that it was related to the water maybe mimicking the people that are all drowned in that in that creek yeah and and yeah. again it's going back to i know this will get a reaction right right but um, you you did say Pip that you couldn't tell if it was a man, a woman, or a child, and that was what made me think maybe it's a mimic. So um, just just kind of just kind of break, breaking the flow for just a bit. Mm -hmm. um, secondhand, one of my mods the most said that uh, the their PC is giving them uh, utter hell. So I uh, need to award the poll participants. The two of us have to have to say who is the better road buddy. I mean, that's. I don't think we do have a. I, I honestly, I would say it's a draw because it's a draw because you and I really weren't. There, there wasn't like one road buddy leaning on the other. No, we were. We were truly an unstoppable force of nature that weekend. We, we were. We really team. were because you got to remember this is before GPS. Yeah. This yeah. is before GPS. So I was driving. We were using MapQuest. We think. were using MapQuest. <laughs> yes, we were. And oh printed my God. out. <laughs> there we go. Yep, yep. Pretty much. Uh, I mean, yeah, it, it was we were we were we were really doing map MapQuest and I mean, come on, it's MapQuest. It was MapQuest. <laughs> um Who's this? But not basically. Talking? But there you go. Yeah, no, um I, I drove, he navigated, and Oh, who brought the snacks? Both, both of us, us. did. And Both then they fed us at all of these places. Yeah, that it was, was really like true. hysterical. That was very true. And on top of that, um, I, I, you know, I mean, if if there was any advantage disadvantage, the only mistake that I think Val did in that entire weekend was agreeing that I should have a quad espresso. <laughs> but, I don't know the red wine. Oh no, the red wine was the second trip. That, that was the we second had trip. Eric yeah. with us. And and to be fair. You know, Val was able to pivot that moment and turn the quad boy story into, you know, epic lore. So yes. I can't really falter for that. Now, can I? Um, anyway, so I can't, I, you know, I guess our answer is it's a draw. It is a draw. It is a draw. So if there's anybody that said, 
you know they were the perfect they were the perfect couple they were the perfect duo then congratulations you yeah. won um so so yeah but i i felt like that that the stage and the the top floor was who the hell are you people yeah I but also, the bottom level was like oh i know exactly who you folks are and i'm gonna i'm gonna have some i'm gonna try to see what i can get away with it wasn't see and i didn't get that feeling so much from it as it was still who are you but it was much more of a i'm going to go in and find out who you are yeah. by pushing your buttons right exactly um it was much more direct maybe than and not necessarily deviant but definitely mischievous yeah definitely, definitely mischievous. mischievous i would agree i would agree with that all right so now let's uh let, let's 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 change gears okay. <laughs> pardon, the pun, pardon the pun and let's go to the um what i i truly think is one of the uh new gems I, I, you know, when so when I had that that back and forth with Jason Hawes last week, this is the place I want to take Jason to. Yeah, I want to take I want to take the the Taps team to the CNO Railway uh, okay, Museum. So you'd never get Steve out of there. You would oh. never get Steve and, and, and Tango out of there. They would play with everything. Uh, this is why I feel like I'm Team Tango, <laughs> because I would just you know when he starts riffing with the magic tricks, I'm just like. You go, baby. You yep, go. Yep. I, I, and you know what? I wish I could say I'm surprised, but the thing is, I know, in my heart of hearts, after talking to you about it, I have a feeling I would become Steve's best bro. Oh yeah. After telling him the story of Evie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because he'd Definitely. be like, you. I can hear him now. You named the cat Evie P. I'm like, yes, we did. Well, no, <laughs> actually, you would have had him at. We took the cat in oh. <laughs> on the because you have to understand, Steve loves his cats. Right. Like, Steve is one of those guys you think he's, you know, he's covered with the tattoos, he's yeah, yeah. everything. No, 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 no. You go, hey, Steve, how are your cats doing? And he he, he turns into grandma yeah, with all the pictures, pictures and right. everything. Yeah, no, he loves his cats. But but um, but that's where I'd want to take him because mm -hmm. just walking, I, I was really sorry you didn't, you weren't there with us in the afternoon because one, it was a gorgeous day and two, whew, we just we, you could just feel yeah there was i mean maybe not so much well i want to hear what your thoughts were about what was in the museum versus what was on the uh on the property itself so so let's start with the museum the museum was the museum was very much former employees right you know that was what i got these were people who who are loved, former train enthusiasts yeah yeah they yeah. loved this these trains they loved this area um i got to be part of kind of the tail end of the little um back and forth that was going on with all of the um female presenting members uh talking to two of the former employees so that was really cool um i didn't get anything again i didn't get anything malevolent no, no, um, no, no. I felt, uh, I felt like if anything, there was um, me, now I'm, I'm, again. This is the thing I got to be very careful about. Whenever I am in a space, and um, you know, Pip always says, "So what you think?" I'm always like, ah, "I don't know." And then I'm reviewing the evidence, and suddenly I'm like, "Wait a minute, there was a breath there. There was something yep. there. Was something there." So I, I'm always very careful about when I say a place was quiet. Yes, but. I will say when I got back from being outside, according to Big G, it had recorded over two thousand events happening wow. on 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 that that, uh, that 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 wheelchair. Yeah. So I'm anxious to see because I had a I had a camera trained on I that cat get ball. over to the wheelchair. So right, right. Um, I never managed to get over there because you and Phil were doing stuff, and that was but, fine. Uh, and and for, but what I was getting, what I felt anyway, especially with with the session that that you all were having. On the other end, it felt like there was a real warmth to the, to the museum. There, it was a happy is. place. It's it was a, a happy place. place. It's also very much the entire property is very much. Um, it's it's a portal. There's a lot of things going back and forth, simply because you got the river right there. It's a train station. People are coming and yeah, going. Yeah, it's still an active train station. It is. Yeah, st yeah we had a train coming through. Um, in fact, John and I were were outside for a little bit when you guys first went in. When I couldn't, I had bad knees, so right, you know. Right, right. Um, but we were sitting outside and just kind of, you know, had the ghost fox going and everything, and got 
train jumpers, basically, you know, jumping on the train. You actually got the word train jumpers. We got jump and we got, we got, no, we got train. And then when we said, you know, did you get on the train? Were you like working on the train? We got no. And then we said, well, did you travel on the train? It was yes. And it was, how did you travel? And it said jump. Oh, man. So... Um, wow, that's a, that's really yeah, interesting. Yeah, it was it that's was really, really it was really neat. Okay. So, um That was the other thing I noticed. We tended to get more except for that one session at the museum where we had like six or eight of us. I noticed things tended to come in more when there were only two of us. Yeah. And and I'm really curious because when I was doing when I was doing my automatic right, and not not necessarily jumping ahead, but we're, we're we're getting there. But when when I got to doing the automatic writing in the Pullman car, it wasn't as clear as when it was just me and Pip at say Balladary Inn, or when it was me, Pip, and Phil at um, at uh, uh, the old hospital on College Hill. So when I was in that when I was in that moment, it felt a little murky. Now. I still managed to get some answers, and I don't know necessarily how relevant they were to what was being asked. But I will say that the dining, even the dining car, the the lovely dining car, it's, I think it's called Gatsby's Tavern. Gatsby's Tavern. It's Gatsby's gorgeous. Tavern. It's beautiful. But I would say, I would say that that there was a very different tonal shift. Yes. From when we were in the in the indoor. And then we got to the actual trains themselves. The, the the trains themselves were definitely more things coming and going. Yeah. It was very I, transient. Yeah. I, I felt a lot of um, things stopping to poke their heads in. Kind of, you know, stopping to look. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I would have been interested to do an SD session there. Um, just to see how many voices I could hear. Right. Um, but, you know, I'll get my chance at some point. You will. No, I, I, have no, I, have no, I have no hesitation at all to believe that, that, that we will. We'll, we'll, we're going to find, whether it's a return trip to Clifton Forge or whether it is another location somewhere closer to where I you are. I want them to come up to the I know, I know you want, I know you want to, with it. Um, it's a matter of making sure it, we can make it work with, with Phil's schedule. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm Phil gonna try and co convince Phil to come to Bridgewater with us. I mean, that's the thing is that is that Phil has given me a blank check that if I want to go and represent Old Spirit somewhere else in the states, I can. Thing is, if I can if I can organize it so that we're it's it's the two of us, I would prefer it to be that. Yeah. Because I am not necessarily the face of Old Spirits. I am part of Old Spirits. It's it's a bit like um, it's a bit like when you see Jason. When you see Jason now on YouTube, and he's and he's 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 investigating with other people, I'm like, "Where's Steve? Where's Steve? Where's yeah. Steve?" You know, and and because I've been tracking with him for so long, and we've talked about this on the Scrim Gazette too. You know, it was hard for me to make that transition for for it to be Jason and Steve, but I have made it. But there's still that part of me that wants to see Grant and Jason kiss and make up, and and, and which would be easy because Jason's a handsome man at his age. Stacked, jacked, and packed. I've said it once. I'll say it again. <laughs> Stacked, jacked, and pa 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 packed. Who's this not talking? I know, I know, I know, I know. But anyway, I think I have uh, gone off topic. So let's get back to this. Just a little. Just a wee bit. All right. So um, the the thing I'm getting at is that yeah, I mean I would love to come up north. But I really would like to have it be both of us come up north, and so so. But but if we can make it happen, we'll make it happen. Um, so I guess in closing, what were your overall thoughts of the entire the? Now, granted, keep keep in mind before you give me before you give me those good impressions. Keep in mind that's the first time we have ever done two investigations in one night. Um, we crammed a lot in seven hours. Oh my god! <laughs> Technically, it was only six hours because we had that hour in the middle. Well, well, I'm I'm, I'm looking at it from the stream point of view. It oh, was okay. six hours, and we started the stream at five fifteen. It ended promptly at midnight. So we got six hours and forty five minutes. From what I've been told, has been one 
par excellent stream. We were streaming at 3K at 60 frames per second at 1080, and we didn't drop once. No. So no. thank you, thank you, Wi-Fi of of uh, of Clifton Forge, yeah. Virginia. You guys came through like a champ. Yeah. Um, I want to go back. It was yeah. definitely cool. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of fun. Um, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it. I don't know that I'll want to be on camera as much. <laughs> if you're if you're traveling with OSI, I know. I know. Um, but I will say this: I, I, I think I'm in your camp in that I would like to have another crack, um, at the theater. Yeah. I mean, definitely, I want another crack at the museum, but. I don't want it to be two in one night. No, no. I would want to do like there was, there was, Friday night and Saturday night or even yeah. Friday night and Sunday night and give us a break in between, um, something like that. that. Granted, we all have schedules, you know. And if we're taking the train like like Pip and I yeah. did, you know, we all, we can come in Friday and we can leave. And honestly, I think out of the two, if, if someone were to say, well, you can have uh, one, you can have one of them be like like on Saturday night. But and and you would get an extra two hours. I would be like, then give that to me at the at the railway museum. Yeah, absolutely. Because the railway museum, it just felt like we had just barely scratched. We the had surface. barely scratched. We only got into one car. Yeah. We didn't get to do anything really outside other than what John and I were doing. Right. And we, I would have loved to get into the caboose that we were that we were going to go into. Yeah. The, the uh, now yeah the red one the red one definitely felt. It felt charged. It felt absolutely charged. Um, I wouldn't have minded. I I don't think. Well, I don't. First off, I don't think that the Greenbrier, which I mm -hmm. believe is the six nineteen, I don't think it is that there is a place for the public to get into it. No, I think that one's still. They're still restoring that one. Yeah. Well, um, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. The They're, one I really want them to restore and get one of them was President Truman's. The the Truman car, yeah. 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 That's the one I want to be in. They're still renovating that. So. Yeah. And and there's but but um I mean yeah, I, I just I absolutely adored. I, I would have liked more time in the museum itself. I would like to yeah. have done a switch where you guys would come over to our end and then we would have gone over there. Um but but there was just it just felt it just that was a bone and and again this is not a complaint because the cno that was a that was an unexpected add-on yeah. it, it 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 landed in our laps the week we were coming up and yeah. i was just like okay pivot and and it's it's exciting to think about the possibilities oh yeah um so any other but but were there any other thoughts you had about about the whole the whole experience this weekend no, I had a lot of fun. I'd come back and investigate with you guys again. That's always something. As, as, as long as you'd have me back. Of course. I mean, I just, I, I guess in closing, what I would, what I would want to say is that, um, you know, Pip was, comp Pip was claiming, Pip was claiming that I was rolling nat twenties with everybody this that weekend. You totally were. But, but to me, all that was, was, um, courtesy one on one. And maybe I learned it from being in the food service. I don't know. I mean, it's just when when I was talking to the people of uh, from from CNO and Wendy from the Masonic uh, Theater, my thought was I want them to remember us as being polite, yep. courteous, and making sure that we were well within our parameters. And what I meant by that was you could really set somebody off if you say you have the space from five to nine and you go yeah okay so we have the space from five to nine but then we'll start packing up at nine which means we'll get out of there at 9 30. yeah no, no. nine o'clock means you are out, out of the of door there. by nine o'clock which yep. we were mm -hmm. and you know that kind of thing is uh, those little details do matter to people and we didn't destroy anything you know it, it sounds weird to say that because nobody you it's don't a need... shame we have to say that it's you know? a shame we have to yeah. say that but um Nothing got broken. No one got broken. You know. Yeah. We we. What's didn't... the old what, what's the what's the old camping site? Leave leave, leave the it site better than, than you how came. you found it. Yeah. Leave yep. it better than you when when you found it. And um, you know the the, but the, yeah that's that's again something you know when you as a as a paranormal investigator, you want to make sure that you 
you you you um you take care of those little details mm -hmm. that that if if something and if something had broken or yep. something we, we we basically stop what we're doing yep. find wendy and say wendy we might have an issue yeah just to make sure that there isn't an issue mm -hmm. um and i mean i tell you i doesn't matter if it's a railway museum it's still a museum it's still a museum and i didn't want to break anything Ooh. in there because wow they had some beautiful oh my god beautiful stuff in that museum it was i really just cool. wanted to sit and play with the trains there was they were amazing yeah and and just 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 some of the just some of the 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 lore that was in there i learned this weekend chat i learned that chessie wasn't a real cat nope. i i always thought chessie was based on somebody's cat but what do you know? I just little, little things like that. Um, so Val, I guess the the you know, thank you very much for being our first ever guest on the Grim Gazette. Thank you so much. Hope for you having enjoyed me. it. I did. It's been a pleasure having you here. And uh, yeah, rest up so that you can travel well tomorrow. Okay. All right. So again, a big thank you to Valerie Griswold Ford for uh, joining me, talking about her experience with Taps, talking about her experience with uh, OSI, talking about her paranormal background and also sharing some uh some some tales out of school uh thank you again everybody for joining us remember you can always be a part of the grim gazette every tuesday starting at 6 p.m we go live at six we launch the gazette at seven and then we go ahead and talk about weird news and paranormal stuff so if you have an idea remember you can always pay a visit to the discord you can always stop in and say Hey, I've got I've got a, a news article. I've got a I've got a clip I'd like for you to look at. Go on ahead and go to our Discord and drop it in there, and uh, I will make sure to make some room for it here on the Grim Gazette. Again, thank you all, everyone. Thank you all for being here tonight. As always, you have a great week, and remember, stay weird. <laughs>